Hey everyone, today I'll be covering how to texture paint skin in Substance Painter. I will cover simple, easy to follow techniques to create believable stylized skin. We will also cover the importance of reference imagery and understand color zones of the face to bring our characters to life. So with that, let's get started. Alright, so let's begin by creating a new folder. And this new folder is going to be our stylized skin. So I'll go ahead and call it stylized skin. And I'll go ahead and hide the other one since we're going to be creating this from scratch. And in this folder, I will go ahead and apply a black mask since I have a few other things in this layer. So what I want to do is with the black mask selected, go ahead and use polygon fill and select mesh fill and simply select your character. What that will do is that'll apply the entire character into this folder. Now, we don't see anything change because I need to add a fill layer. So I'll go ahead and do that and drop that inside of the fill layer. And I'll go ahead and call this base. Now for this base layer, I wanna go ahead and scroll down and only enable color and roughness. And for the base color, I wanna go ahead and use these values I already have and go ahead and change the colors. Okay, and there we go. And this is the skin base color that I landed on. Now, this is simply just a base color and we're going to continue to build up upon this to get something that looks much more believable. For reference, I will be looking at this. As you can see, these are the color zones of the face. So depending on the level of blood flow, vessels, muscles, fat, you get a combination of, you know, yellow, red, blue, maybe sometimes green, uh, orange, and we're going to be using this as our guide, okay? And it stays pretty consistent throughout um, characters. I mean, it varies it still is applied to females as well, males and females. And here is the look and feel for the stylized character that I want. You can see that all of this is being applied to our characters. You can see here, if we break down this reference, we're getting that nice red flush in the nose, the cheeks, the ears, the, around the eyes here, and then a little bit more yellow up on the forehead and a little bit, a hint of blue down here. Um, and that may be toned down a bit depending on how much uh, realism or kind of that five o'clock shadow we're trying to chase here. In this case, there isn't much. And here you can see another good example um, from ArtStation and just some really good, nice, simple uh, color to bring this character to life. So we're going ahead, we're going to go ahead and apply that overall to our character. But first we need to create the core skin. So now that I have this base here, I will go ahead and just increase the roughness just a hair um, so we still get some highlights here. Now, I wanna go ahead and create another fill layer. And in this fill layer, I wanna go ahead and just call this skin breakup. Now that we have our skin breakup layer, I wanna verify that I only have the color channel enabled here. So I'll just alt click color and we only have color. And here I want to select base color and what I want to type in with under after procedural texture is Gaussian, right? So you can start to type in Gaussian and we can start to add in the Gaussian spots too. And once we do that, we can go ahead and increase the skyling to, uh, tiling or scaling to about 15. All right. So we have something like this. And then once we do that, we want to go ahead and change the blending mode from normal to color dodge. So if we scroll down here or go down here, you see color dodge and there we go. And you can see we start to get a little bit of a breakup in the skin. And what I can also do is lower this opacity just a bit so it's not as intense and feel free, you know, somewhere between 70, 80 or whatever you you see fit for your characters. So there, we have this nice procedural skin breakup. And now what we want to do is add patches in the skin. And this next layer is going to affect both the diffuse color and the roughness. So I'll call it skin patches. All right, and then alt click color, and then also just left click rough. So we have that. 
So what I want to do for this layer, the skin patches, is go ahead, hit base color, and instead of Gaussian, I want to do B N W, B N W. Okay, so black and white. And what I'll go ahead and do is use, you know, it really doesn't matter. They're pretty similar, but I think I'll just go ahead and use black and white spots too for these patches. So we have this, and then we can bump up the scaling to about 15, 10, 15. It kind of depend on your UVs, but we have something like this. Then what I want to do is change the blending mode to overlay. And there we go. So we once we change the blending mode to overlay, we definitely, oops, that was screen actually. So let me do that again and find overlay. There we go. So that looks about right. So we have overlay here. And then what I want to do is also lower the opacity quite a bit, like down to about 10%. So this is a subtle effect, but it's going to give us some nice breakup in the skin. So the next thing I need to do is make sure that I also adjust the blending mode in the roughness channel. So if I go to the top in layers, hit base color, go down to roughness, you can see that I have skin patches here, but the normal, the blending mode is set to normal. So go to normal and then also change that to overlay. And then also really drop this down, this opacity down to about five or 10. There we go. So now we get this nice breakup in skin detail. So it doesn't look too perfect and too oily, so to speak, or too glossy. All right, so I'm gonna change my layers back to base color and we're gonna continue moving on. The next thing that I want to do is add color variation using our baked mesh maps. So let's go ahead now and create another fill layer and I'll just call this AO color variation. And once I do that, I can go ahead and set this to color only. And then I can grab this color and I'm gonna just quickly eye drop here. And you can kind of see, it's gonna be more this pinkish color that we have. So this is coming back to our pure ref reference here where this AO is going to be used for a cav the cavities of the face. Okay, so the ears and around the head. So you're gonna see what type of effect we're gonna get out of this. So once we have this as our color slot, I wanna go ahead and change the blending mode to multiply. So go ahead and hit normal, then multiply. Then comes the part where we need to actually add the AO map. So I'm gonna right click on the layer, add black mask. Right click on the black mask now and add fill. And then once I have that, you can see I have a grayscale slot. And what I wanna do, maybe I'll move this up just a little bit and go to project. And then here you can see here, are all my big mesh maps from my, my scene, my project. And what I wanna do is grab the skin texture file that was baked for AL, left click, drag that and throw that right on the grayscale, okay? So we can see what type of effect that's having, but what we want to do is actually flip this or invert this. So in order to, ease, to easily do that, right click on AO color variation and add a levels. And once you add a levels, you can simply do invert. And then there you go. So now we're getting some nice color variation in here, but what I want to do is just lower the intensity of this and then we can bring the level slider to the left which will add a little bit more contrast and then depending on the intensity of the effect you can always tone down the opacity here so if we do a before and after you can see that this AO is giving some nice color variation and you can see that we're getting some good detail around the gloves good detail around the hair and adding some more depth to our character. All right, great. So we're making good progress. And what I wanna do now is use another bake mesh map. We're gonna use curvature. And curvature is really good for using 
or replicating subsurface scattering. Okay, again, if we take a look at our reference, you can see that there's a lot of this subsurface scattering here coming in the nose, ears, which is the light kind of coming in and bouncing through these very thin skin pieces. And that's where our thickness map actually, excuse me, I think I was saying curvature, but our thickness map is gonna help with that. So let's go ahead now and add a thickness map. So I'll go ahead and add in a layer. And for this layer, I'll go ahead and just call it SSS for subsurface scattering. And now that I have this set up, I wanna go ahead and do color only again. So I'll click on color. And I want to set this again, instead of this pink and um, light color, I wanna set this to like a really, more of this red layer, okay? So you can kind of play with these values, but we can come back and change that as we see fit. Then I want to change this to color dodge like we did below. So if I click on the normal blending layer and go down to color dodge, we have something like this, okay? So you can start to see the effect that's happening, but what I wanna do is limit it to, again, the, th the thickness map of our character. So what I wanna do now is add a black mask and we have this layer and then add a fill layer, all right? And in this fill layer, I wanna go ahead and grab this, our skin curvature map here. It's, yep, this one here, left click that, drop that on the character. And then what I wanna do is add a levels. See, a levels. And then go ahead and invert the levels on our character. So we get something like this. So you can see the before, and then after on our character. Now, it's quite a bit intense. He is looking too red, too pink now. So that's where we can come back to this top layer and really drop this opacity on our character here. Okay, so we get something like this. All right. So now you have this nice set up where you can change colors if we can if we say maybe oh this is a little bit too red let me just tone down the saturation a bit and lighten it up we can do that you can adjust the opacity and impact of that if the ao color variation was a bit intense we can also drop that so we get something they'll have an impact but it's more subtle now we're making really good progress we're getting this nice skin detail on our character and if I hit shift right click we can take a look at it in different lighting scenarios and you know if we feel like it's still a little bit too you know we need more variation is where we're getting at so what I want to do is create a new folder and I'm gonna call this color zones so I'll go ahead and call it color zones and in this layer I want to now create or in this folder go ahead and create now a fill layer and we'll call one called yellow and I'll click and duplicate that I'll call this one blue and we can call this one red all right now of course all I want is just color so I'm just going to alt click color for each of these layers and then I want to set them to their respective colors so here for yellow I can select this go over here and bring this up and looking at our reference here, you can kind of see this is what I'm going for as far as the yellow, reds, and blues. Okay, so I'll move this to my right so I can reference this. And we have this yellow here, which is gonna be much brighter, less orange. Something like this will be fine. We're gonna to go to our blues and this is gonna be more of a pale blue here. Give it some color. Something like this should be fine. And then the red will just be, again, typical red, but I'm gonna bring down the saturation, maybe bring up the value a bit. Okay, now for these three layers, what I want to do is add a black mask for each one. All right, something like that. And then we can start painting. So what I wanna do is grab my brush 
here and I'm going to give myself more room. So I'm going to change my view to 3D only. Okay. Then what I want to do is right click and you can see on my alpha, I have this dirt blurry dense. So typically you have a soft one. So I just typed in blur. So I just have something that has a little bit of noise and dirt to it. And so it's not perfect. And if you have a pen, definitely use your pen tablet. Um, I'll be using kind of a combination. Uh, I'll just be using my mouse right now because I'm recording. Uh, I, don't have room, I don't have room for my tablet right now anyways. And you can bring up the, adjust the size. And then the flow, I typically drop that, especially with using a mouse, um, to about 40. And then your stroke opacity, bring that back down pretty, pretty low here, okay? And this will work fine. And then what I wanna do is jump to yellow, okay? And now, if I go ahead and actually hide the hair, you can kinda of see what's going on. I also wanna do this, at least initially, with symmetry, all right? And then if we're taking a look at our reference, I wanna go ahead and just start adding kind of this yellow hue to the forehead, a little bit to the uh, cheeks, under the eyes, and maybe around the mouth, okay? So if I go ahead and just start to just, start to paint this here, and again, if we're using this as reference, that's kind of here on our uh, other monitor, and we're coming down a bit here, and we're gonna get maybe a little, and the nice thing is we can layer these, right? and blend these, okay? And especially since we're using soft brushes and we're using, um, you know, subtle masks, they'll blend very nicely, okay? So that's looking pretty good for that yellow. And then we can go ahead now and grab this blue layer, okay? And the good thing again is instead of using paint, we're painting in the masks. So I can change these colors later. So now that I have this blue, I just want to go ahead now, oops, go to the blue layer, make sure I'm painting in the mask, and you can see we get this happening here. Now, this is going to be even less intense because, you know, he's not going to really have a five o'clock shadow, but we want a subtle indication of this kind of blue shift hue happening towards the bottom of the mouth. Okay, so that's looking pretty good there, maybe a little bit up here, all right? And then once we get that, we can head up to the red, and that's where all the red blood flushness is coming through. And we can go maybe start down here with the ear, and we can see, we can start to get these this nice effect again that we're trying to achieve here for the ears, the cheeks, the nose that we have in our reference, all referring back to this color zones reference, okay? So we have something like this here and it's going to just kind of gradually fade around and we can take a look and continue to add in a little bit there and then around the eyes okay something like this all right now of course don't ignore the nose we want to just kind of start adding that in something like this and then we can get into the mouth or the lips, I should say, and really just kind of get in there and just start painting right around this lips area to add that nice variation for our character. And we can come back and clean that up with a black mask, but I think you get the idea, okay? So now I have this, and I'm gonna turn back the hair, and this is what he's starting to look like, okay? So what we can do is you can change these colors, of course, at any given time. So I can drop the saturation here, so if it's a little bit too much, or the other thing I can do is change the opacity, so I can just kind of dial back the intensity depending on how you know intense that I want this. Now the blue is definitely coming. You know, I'd say that's not really for younger. Uh, character models or adolescent models. So what I'll do is definitely tone this down. So it's just, you just start to get kind of this hint of it. All right, so very low, maybe around 20 to 30. And then the red, same thing. And then you have complete procedural control on this to be able to get what you need. All right, so that's right, that's it, you guys. So I hope this helped, at least, you know, understanding the workflow and understanding how to add, um, variation, color variation, realistic skin, uh, and understanding how to approach it and just kind of continue to practice. And we should, uh, you should start improving and getting better results.
So I'm happy where this is at. I'll go ahead and stop the video here. If you got any questions, comments, or anything, um, drop them down below. Like and subscribe is always appreciated. And uh, yeah, let's just keep moving along. Thanks, everyone. Take care.